what's going on world is your boy steve dab 317 and this is a video that i've been planning to record for like the last two weeks i haven't got around to it but right now i'm headed up to chicago for a car show so i figure what better time to start recording right now so first and foremost this is not clickbait like i said this is not clickbait i am absolutely going to tell you what i did to get a uh, track hawk for absolutely free um and you know it's kind of one of those things where it, it's not difficult anybody can do it you just got to kind of stay tuned and see the way i did it but there's multiple ways of making it happen and it's something that you can do too now if you do not have the patience to check out this intro and check out this entire video and i don't know if it'll be one segment two three i don't know what it'll be i'm gonna try to put everything out there though but if you don't have the patience if you're trying to skip through to find like the key points listen i'm gonna say i'm gonna save you some time right now this ain't the video for you like if you don't have the patience to, and, and the ability to sit through for something like that you're not gonna make it through this process the way i'm doing it so check out this brief intro and then we'll jump right into it so let's see where to start where to start uh the reason why i'm making this video and you will notice on my channel i literally never talk about money i don't talk about finances i don't i don't want people to feel like i'm some person who's got like a, a gazillion dollars or anything like that because i'm not uh i'm just a person who is an avid event investor um, I make strategic moves. You know, I always tell people I play the game of chess, not checkers. So I'm always looking two, three, four steps out in advance. But the main reason why I'm making this video, uh, two, well, I guess three weeks ago now, two and a half, three weeks ago, I was a uh, downtown nap at uh, Circle Center. I'm sorry, not at Circle Center, but on my, at Monument Circle, and I ran across a couple of uh, a couple of youngsters. I want to say they either attend North Central or recently attended North Central. And basically, I was sitting out there with the track hog, hollering to buddy Danny of mine, and they were they were just kind of asking questions, like they want to take pictures of the track hog. I told them it's fine, it's open, you know, do whatever. And then they, they kind of just you know politely, which is like you know if you don't mind us asking, like how did you go about, how do you get something like this? How do you get a hundred thousand dollar truck, you know, Jeep truck, whatever it is, and uh. You know, I try to be I try to be as transparent as possible, at least within reason. Uh, so, you know, I broke it down for him. Uh, at least I briefly broke it down. I told him I'll be posting this video soon and they can kind of get a few more details. But a couple of things that were true, like actually two or three things that were that were key contributors to me being able to get the, to get the track off for free. So first thing first was finding the truck that I wanted. So I, I, I worked through narrowing down. I looked at a lot of different things. I uh, started off kind of looking at a charger, um, which definitely fascinated me. But then I have a little winning car in a car seat. And back when I was pushing like Monte Carlos and Camaros, like I just learned that having a two door and trying to, uh, you know, work with a car seat in and out, it was just a headache, you know, so I didn't want to go that route. So the logical next move was to take a look at a uh, at the charger so i was looking at the charger hellcat and i was like you know what this is a fit me because i knew i wanted something with some speed to it but i needed a little bit more space um uh, and then you know I, I i started they released the track hawk so i started looking into the track hawk actually i looked into the track hawk in the durango uh the durango has that third row of seating but i just i i don't i don't hate the durango body style but i just i don't love it and i've that's like all the years since the Durango came out. Like I've never actually loved the body style, but then Grand Cherokee's on the other hand, like, man, I, I, I've liked the Grand Cherokee like as far back as I can remember, you know, long before they were putting, you know, superchargers and stuff like that in them, long before the SRTs. And so, you know, it, for me, it, it eventually became an easy decision, not to mention with having car seats and the rest of my family and, you know, it, it kind of gave me the opportunity to, oh, give me a second. I'm about to, uh, nope, I don't have enough space. I was thinking about passing on the shoulder. I'm behind two semi-trucks who, I, they've been, I think they're both re uh, maxed out on speed, but neither one wants to let the other one over, so they've been riding side by side for, like, literally miles now. That's why I went ahead and started recording this video. But anyways, I digress. So the track call between being able to get car seats in and out, and having a bit of extra uh, room for like, you know, to put like power wheels or groceries or any, anything else I had, just activities of daily living. It, it was just a natural progression. And I was able to get it with 707 uh, horsepower from the factory. So I kind of had that speed element as well. So narrowed it down. I found a track hog actually down in uh, Shelbyville. 
uh, when it took a look at it. Uh, he's getting over now, finally. When it took a look, actually, let me go ahead and pass his truck and then I'm gonna I'm jump back into the video here in a moment. And that's why he's going slow. There's a car up here with their hazard lights on doing like, I don't know what their deal is, but. Um, they're slowing down, a, they're arguing with this truck driver. Uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what his deal is. I don't know why he did that for so long. So, all right, I'm back. That was a lot better. Sorry about that. I had to. Like I said, I was behind him for so long, had to try to make up a little bit of ground so I could arrive on time. But yeah, so uh, I don't remember exactly where I was at. Let's get over in the slow lane. But basically, so I found one down in Shelbyville, went down there, took a look at it. It was the Red Line, uh, Red Line Pearl 2, red color or whatnot. So I liked it. Um, done a test drive, which is, that's another odd thing too. So I went in, the guy actually let me test drive the track hog, which from my understanding, what I've heard from other people, uh, most places don't allow you to test drive anything with a, with a with a Hellcat engine in it, but you know what I mean? So, dude was real cool. I was like, hey, you know what? I'll give you a thousand bucks to hold it, and then give me three uh, business days, and I'll make a, uh, a brokerage exchange to, you know, go ahead and come up and purchase the vehicle. So, what I ended up doing was, So what I ended up doing was uh, getting into my stockbroker account um, and selling some shares of a stock I picked up. Now, and this kind of goes into the, the, the details about how I got the track off for free. So in, I, I wanna say September, if it wasn't September, it was October. One of the two of 2017, Roku, you know, Roku, the little streaming, streaming sticks, they made their IPO. And I wanna say they IPO'd around, that's for anyone who doesn't know that's the initial uh public offering right so basically you can now buy into the company you can purchase shares of stock of roku so they made that they had their ipo in like september or october of 2017 i'm pretty sure it was and i think they ipo to like 24 dollars 26 dollars a share or something like that shortly after ipo it took a bit of a dip but i had already even before their ipo i had looked into roku and i felt like it was a really solid company I've been watching the cable companies die slowly but surely, and I knew that streaming, without a doubt, was going to be the wave of the future. It's uh, picking up now and it's continuing to grow. Anyway, long story short, I started buying Roku shares at like $17 per share. So, and this is where I'm not going to do exact math, just give you some ballpark numbers. But basically, at $17 per share, um, and I ended up selling like 40, 45 shares of the, uh, so I sold some of my shares of Roku stock. Now, when I sold the shares, which was, I don't know, a month ago, a month and a half, however long I've had this Jeep. Um, when I sold the shares, actually it was less than a month because I'm still on paper plates. So I sold the shares for 400, like $430 per share. So again, you can do the exact math. Basically what happened, They were asking me to rev it. They was pulling up next to me. I, you know, got to keep the fans happy too, right? And I actually could have got. I've got a. I've got a. I've got a good credit score now. It took me some years to build, but I've, I've taken care of my credit score. So I actually could have walked away with the track hog with zero dollars down, zero dollars out of pocket. But my payments would have been like, I don't know, like fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars, maybe seventeen. I don't remember the exact number, but like for me, psychologically, I try to keep as many bills as I can underneath the $1,000 mark. So like $999.99 in my mind is significantly cheaper than $1,000. So basically I went in, I'm like, hey, I need to get the payments underneath $1,000. So, you know, I was like, what do I need to put down? And I think, I think I put down like 20, I don't know, like 20, 22k 21 21 20, something around something in that ballpark whatever it was to get it down below uh a thousand dollar payment so the payments came in at like nine i don't know nine and some change 990 something like that now 
Still not free yet, but you see how basically that entire down payment was money that I got from the Roku stocks, not a dollar out of my pocket. So the other part of it, the other 60, 70,000, whatever it broke down to, uh, and, and, and really quick, I know some people are gonna say, well, track hogs, they've been out for a few years now. They're not $100,000 Jeeps. Well, I've got 10K in my rims, and then I got music and, and some other customized stuff. So that's how I came up with the 100K number. So basically, the other 60, 70K, whatever it breaks down to, I ended up uh, two, three years ago, two, two and a half years ago, I wanna say, I found a house for sale that was, that w it was tow up from the flow up. Need a lot of rehab work. There was like a non-for-profit that was, uh, there was a non-for-profit that owned the house and was like a, like a home caretaker type thing or something. So anyways, it was ran down, a lot of wheelchair scrapes and stuff on the walls I had to go through, pretty much gutted, and then I rehabbed the property. I purchased that house for like 115, and I guess with my closing costs and everything else, I ended up buying a pickup truck because I needed a pickup truck to work on it. So all in, we'll say like 120. Um, for, for the rehab, I put 30K into the rehab. Um, I found some amazing deals, and that just came through me always talking to people, like literally, Everywhere I go, I talk to people. And that's probably the first tip I give you, especially if you're getting involved in real estate. Like, get out there and talk to people. Like, get out there and talk to people. Like, everywhere you go, mention real estate. And I don't mean do it like in an annoying way. Like, every time somebody's like, oh, here we go with the dude who always want to. But just, you know what I mean? Like, hey, man, how's it going? Oh, you know, things going well, man. Just looking for my next house to purchase. And if somebody wants to engage the conversation, they'll give you a direct response. If they don't, they'll just keep, oh, okay, well, good to see you. And, you know, you'll go on talking about sports or whatever else, whatever your, your interests are. So don't force it upon anybody, but frequently bring it up because you never know when you're going to meet somebody who's that next plug or that next connection. You know, so like for me, I started, I wanted to get involved. So I started shooting real estate photography and through real estate photography, I've been able to meet people who are realtors or brokers as well as investors. You know, I've been able to uh, uh, accumulate a couple of properties via that channel, um, and I'm still constantly meeting people because I'm still meet, uh, constantly meeting with people and uh, taking photos for them. So I'm meeting people that contribute to my my master plan, if I may. You know, so I've made some amazing connections, and I'll continue to do so, but namely because I'm not afraid to open my mouth. I'm always willing to step out and talk and speak about what it is I've got going on. So, uh, road noise ahead, nice. Uh, let me get out the fast lane. I got somebody coming up on me. So, so basically, I purchased for 115. We'll say 120, and then I put 30 into the rehab. They put me in at 150. I did a cash out refi, and the appraisal came in at, she's like 190, 189, 190, something like that. So what ended up happening is, I left like 40, 40, 45 thousand dollars of equity in the house. I pulled out my 30, actually I put out like 35 or 37,000 I think uh, of cash, so I did a cash out refi. So all the money I had put into the house, I pulled it out. Uh, and then when I refinanced, I got rid of PMI because I only put like 3% down on the house when I first got it. So I pulled out, I refinanced, my mortgage went from, and again, I'm estimating, but it went from like 850 down to like 750. Now the rents in the area are right around 13 to 1400. And again, I'm fully rehabbed, so it may even be a little bit more than that. So, you know, I was like, this will be a good buy. Um, we'll just kind of live here for the time being. Well, while living there, there was another house like it. I was walking the neighborhood, found another house that came about being for sale. And the house was, uh, I, I, I don't remember what it was listed for. Anyways, it was listed, and then all of a sudden it was pending, like almost immediately. You know, this is when the market started to pick up. And I'm like, neither here nor there. I hit up my realtor. I'm like, hey, I am curious to look at it because I try to look at all the houses in the area. So I went and looked at it, seen it was ran down. The people who had it pending, something, and this is when COVID is jumping off. Something happened with their uh, finances where they couldn't secure financing. So the house popped back on the market. Now, in the meantime, keep in mind, my wife and I had already popped over, looked at it. So I had an idea of what the rehab would cost me. Uh, so... What I ended up doing, as soon as it was pending again, I called my realtor. I'm like, hey, go ahead and uh, go to throw this on the market for it. I mean, go ahead and put an offer for me. Like, I already knew what it looked like. I already had a rehab estimate. I knew what I was willing to offer. I'm like, hey, throw this offer out there. They counter offer. 
I didn't I didn't want to spend a ton of time going back and forth, but I felt comfortable at the number, so I went ahead and purchased that house also. And uh, the amount I put down on that house was less than what I pulled out the other house when I did a cash out refi. So paying for the Jeep, I don't want you to feel like I digress too far, but all this is relevant to paying off the Jeep. So I went and just, just continue to look at the market and I noticed houses, and we're talking about the first house I mentioned, the smaller of the two, it's like uh, 14, a little bit over 1,400 square feet, it's a 3-2. Houses that size in the neighborhood, they started going up in price. So like the last three or four near that size that have sold, they sold for like 242, 260, 260. Uh, one sold for 290, but it had a, had a basement, it was a little bit bigger. But basically, and the numbers have been continuing to trend upwards. So with me living in that property for two years before moving out, so we've moved to the other house now. With me living there for two years, basically, I was able to sell the property without having to pay the capital gains taxes, right? So I lived there with, within uh, two of the last, of the most five recent years. Now, and, and really quick, quick, quick disclaimer, I am not an accountant. I am not a financial advisor. I'm telling you my story. Uh, double check all this stuff in your state and see what your rules are. And, you know, things may be different. But I'm telling you how I came to the decision that I came to. So I looked at what I stood to make in terms of renting the property, uh, which there was, there was a nice size profit margin, uh, not including CapEx or anything like that, I guess, to the tune of about $700 or so. Um, and I would probably factor in, I guess, 30% of that. CapEx and every, just all my expenses, taxes and everything, about 30%. So I looked at that number and I, I tried to determine how long would it take me to generate um, basically 100K uh, going that method as opposed to just selling the house now and walking away without paying the taxes. So on 100K, capital gains taxes, and I don't I don't know the exact number, what is it, 30, 35, 37%. Basically, if I would have had, if I would have lived there for, oh, let's say, only a year, and I went to sell, they were going to hit me over the head, so I probably wouldn't have sold. But seeing as how I was there just over two years, almost two and a half years or whatever, you know, I figured it was in my best interest to go ahead and just sell, pay off the Jeep, take the other money, and do some, you know, allocate it elsewhere. And I've still got some stock holdings, but that is essentially the method I use to get the Jeep track hog for free. And the reason why I say it's free because like. Stuff like this, and, and I love cars. I, I absolutely, I always have, and I always will. Like, it's just a huge passion, probably even more so than I like vehicles. I enjoy the culture, the car culture, meeting people, learning. You see me, you'll see me at RC events. You'll see me at Big Wheel events. You'll see me, uh, man, off-roading. You'll see me, like, a, a gambit of things because I literally, I love speed. I love, you know, automobiles. Um, so, like, but for me, Although it's it's a big part of my life, I don't I don't believe in making purchases with purchases like this. Look, I guess what some people would consider luxury. Um, I I think it's a stretch. I wouldn't consider this a, a luxury vehicle, um, though it is a Grand Cherokee. Like it, it's like I feel like I've got like a seventy five thousand dollar drive. Well, probably an eighty thousand dollar drive train with like a twenty thousand dollar car or something. I don't know. It's just, there's just small things that you notice. And, I, and, I, and I'll detail those in a different video. But basically, I, tr I, don't, I don't believe in paying for stuff like this out of money that I, that I per se clock in and clock out for. You know, money that I, income that I actually earn. I do it with income that came about through strategic investing. You know, and I guess that, that's, that's, the, that's the moral of, of this entire video. And hopefully, you know, some people are still with me. Matter of fact, if you are with me, uh, just comment below like hey, I'm still here, bro. You know what I'm saying? That lets me know that somebody's actually watching So I'm not just talking and trying to share, share these nuggets and they're falling on deaf ears, you know, but like w When I was growing up everybody who had like bars and Vogue's or, or Dayton's or, or Momo's like the people who I know who are riding like that like they so dope and like in my mind for a great deal of my life I thought I just thought that was that was the avenue. That was how you did it. Get out here, you sell drugs, you can live a rich, fast life and have fancy cars and stuff like that. But what I realized is that like I was I was so undereducated and uneducated, it was almost scary. Right? So and, and it's not like this is some magic pill. You, you know, it's not like this is some some privilege that and here's another thing also. It's 
when it comes to building financial wealth, and I'm not saying things aren't, aren't different per, per different demographics or different cultures, but it's not like a magic book that is only accessible to, to white people or to, to you know what I mean, just, just and, and, I, and I mentioned white people because it's things that I hear people say. That's why they came to mind. But like, what I realized is that as a result of my own ignorance, I wasn't taking advantage of the resources that were made available to me, right? And in hindsight, I don't, I can't blame other people for, for my shortcomings in life because it's one of those, if I knew better, I would have do better. I would have done better. Whatever sounds best there, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know. And I wasn't educated and I have wonderful parents, but they're not really financially savvy. So, was, I mean, they can only teach me what they knew, you know, which wasn't a ton when it come to, when it came to finances. So, uh, I ended up meeting up with some people and learned some things and I got some book recommendations and I'll never forget the... The book that changed my life. What well, two books? Rich Dad Poor Dad, and I, and I think you're gonna. You probably heard that a million times. You maybe have read it. Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki, and that book changed my life because it, it changed my mindset, and I no longer was fascinated in trying to find a job that paid me the most. It was always in you know what I want to do my own thing, on my own schedule. I want to do something where it's commission based, where there's no upper limit to the cap, or where somebody else doesn't determine how much I get to make or when I get to, when I have to go to work and things like that. I wanted the flexibility to spend time with my kids. So I opted to go the business ownership routes, which is why I started multiple businesses and probably will continue to do so because I truly enjoy it, especially during those difficult startup phases because it's always, I don't know, it, it kind of gives you butterflies because it can be scary and, and a bit difficult to an extent. Uh, but you know, th those are the things that I, I enjoy doing. For some people, the nine and five approach is best for them, and if that works for you, stick to it. I'm not, not, not. I am not knocking anyone's hustle. However, you get it, get it. Hopefully, it's legit. But like I said, it's not my place to decide what a per what the next person should or shouldn't be doing. You know. So I, I ended up. Uh, how, how do I put this? So, okay, checking to make sure I'm still recording. Sorry. So I ended up getting to a point where. I realized in order to get where I wanted to be in life, I had to do a ton of reading, which I started doing. Rich Dad, Poor Dad was where I started. And then I had a, I got to tell you this story because it, it's, it's, man, I don't want this to be a five hour video, but listen, I'm gonna tell you this story because it, it's literally ties back to what I said about always talking to people. Silly story, but this is how I got started. There was a guy and, and I don't, I don't want to reveal his name on the on here because he's very very low key and i don't know how he would feel about it and i haven't hit him up and asked for permission or anything we still talk all the time though but i went to it a couple years few years three four years ago i don't know something whenever avocado avocado prices started going up ridiculous i was going in the store they were like a dollar 25 dollar 50 for one avocado now me i love avocados like literally i can eat avocados with every meal all day long that's just like my go-to avocado toast for breakfast and i just i love avocados and the prices started going up. I was pissed off. I said, you know what? I'm going to show them. I'm going to grow my own avocados. Bam. For those of you who live in Indiana, you can understand how there, there would be some challenges with that, right? So I get online. I start doing research. Um, I figured out that I needed to get uh, avocado plants to like cross-pollinate like a male and female plant or whatever to get them to yield fruit. So I found a store online that offered, they, they like grafted avocado plants and they were like little small, like three feet plants or whatever. Ordered, I think three of them. And uh, inside the house, I said, I took I took a bathroom we, we never use. And I set it up with like heat lamps. And then every day, a couple times a good day, I would go in and run a shower uh, all the way hot and let it steam up. And I had like a whole like grow house, grow house type thing going inside. Like, in fact, I, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if the feds wasn't watching my utility bills or if, may, if somebody didn't get to the point that was like, man, what's he got going on over there? It seemed a little sketchy. But so anyways, I'm trying to grow these avocados. I'm not having any luck. So I'm on a forum. I'm on a forum. I see a guy out of Indiana. He was he had a picture and he was showing, hey, I got my avocado plant to begin yielding fruit. And like a little picture, this a little small avocado. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try to find this dude. So I search on, I search on uh, everywhere, Google. Uh, Instagram, Facebook. I got on Facebook and there were two people with his name in Indiana. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to send them both a message. So I sent them both basically the same message like, hey, I was on a forum 
and you made a post and a, listen the post he made was like it's like 19 years it was crazy it was like way way it's like nine or ten years ago i'm like hey you made a a post about 10 years ago or whatever it was about uh getting avocados to grow in indiana yada 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 i asked some questions so i sent it like i said the exact same message to both of them the other person i'm pretty sure he probably read that message and immediately put me on a weirdo block list like i would have put me on a block list if i got a message like that from somebody right especially somebody i've never seen or met now the other guy who's a good friend of my friend slash mentor of mine right now he ended up, uh, and I found this story out after the fact. He was at, he was at an amusement park. I think it was Kings Island, and he had set a goal to like ride every single ride, like literally all the rides, big rides, kitty ride, didn't matter. He wanted to ride every ride at Kings Island. So he's going through doing his thing. Looked at his phone, and he's like, you know, I got the weird message, and I'm looking and reading. So he ended up writing me back, was like, hey, yeah, that's me, yada, yada, yada. So long story short, my little makeshift workout uh, thing wasn't working, the plants weren't doing well, but he had a more elaborate setup. So I'm like, hey, uh, if you want, you can stop by my gym and like pick up the plants I have. He's like, all right, cool, I'll pick them up. So he came through, picked up the plants, and we, we, we were chatting a little bit. I was mentioning real estate, and come to find out, he's a, he's a what I would consider a pretty savvy real estate investor. Uh, so he's like, hey, let's just let's link up and do lunch or something. All right, cool, back. So we link up, we went to, he's a, he's a vegan, maybe a vegetarian, he, I'm pretty sure he's, anyways, so he picks out a place, we, we meet up there, you know, we sit down, and he brought me a book. And that, that brings me to my second most influential book I've ever read, and it was by Scott Trench, and the book title was Set for Life. You know, now, now really quick, I'm gonna digress. Remember how, how earlier I was mentioning how how ignorant ignorant I was in a sense of utilizing available resources. Like most of the questions you have right now in life, like they are in a book somewhere where somebody's already experienced what you've experienced, and they took the time to write about it. And they don't just do that for the for the you know for their health. And most authors don't make a ton off selling books. They do it out of most of them from for from my understanding most of them do it from a love or for a passion or from a desire to give back you know so they can continue helping others when they're long and gone you know so like the book and scott trench is still here don't get me wrong uh he's still alive and well i listen to his podcast with uh what is it mindy jensen like on a regular basis so you know we, we got to the point where we were sitting up there talking like hey i've got something for you to check out and it was scott trench's book set for life it was a paperback copy and uh you know i immediately went because we talked we talked a ton you know he kind of told me about the portfolio he built and things like that so i i went home and i immediately got to reading it i want to say i read that book in like two and a half days yeah two two and a half three days because like i was just trapped chapter after chapter and what's nice about this book is that scott trench and that and that in that particular book he starts off from like zero dollars you know what I mean? And then like the first, you know, the first section is like building from like zero to 10,000. And then maybe the next section is like from 10,000 to your first 100,000. And then uh, I think the third session section is like uh, building a financial runway, you know, or, or something broken down like that. But basically it wasn't one of those books where like you already got to have, you know, $250,000 going in. And this is how you start a major, you know, it's very basic very simple and about how anybody could do it so i'm like you know what i've got nothing to lose so i started implementing a lot of that stuff and like it, it's it's in, a, in all honesty it's almost unbelievable how fast you can accumulate things when you start living a very frugal lifestyle you know so we and, and we already did decent but you know i read the book and talking with you know my mentor and I just really got fascinated with figuring out how to live off 50% or less of my income. So what I started doing, you know, my wife and I, we made a detailed budget and we started shaving things. You know, we shaved a lot. We, we kept things that were super important to us, but like, we, we're both personal trainers. Like we enjoy working out and running. You can do most of that for free. Now we've got a full scale gym in our garage, like literally a full throttle gym in our garage, which you've probably seen if you watch some other videos. So like it, it just got to the point where it was it was exciting 
being able to accumulate and not spend money. So we ran really lean, really lean. All our vehicles were paid for. And, uh, you know, we just, we live very frugally. Uh, we didn't have cable anyways. I don't watch much TV. Um, we have like the Roku, obviously Roku, because, you know, I, I, I'm a firm believer of it. So we got like the Roku sticks and we do, we do some streaming and stuff periodically. But like, I, TV is just not a big part of my life. In fact, about eight years ago, I stopped watching professional sports. Uh, and it is not that I don't love them. I enjoy sports still. But like, for me, it didn't make sense in my mind to watch people running around making millions, multi-millions of dollars, when at the time I wasn't making multi-millions of dollars, you know? So, uh, that, that was kind of like my reason for, for, for stopping. And then it's been so many years now, like I don't even, I don't even think about it. People be telling me like, Hey, did you watch the the NFL the championship game or the NBA championship or I mean Super Bowl? That's what it's called. You watch this, you watch the Tour de France, did you follow the Olympics? And like, nah, I don't because like at some point a client's gonna come in, they gonna tell me, hey, the such and such won the championship or really big news they'll tell me. And sometimes I get on YouTube and look at highlights, but like I just based off where I'm trying to be in life right now and what I'm doing, I don't have time to. I don't have time to do stuff like that. So I just I just don't at the moment. Those are things that I optionally chose to cut out. Um, like I love lawn care. I like working in my yard, which again, you'll see that from my channel. I spend, mm, I, I probably spend what, what would be considered a ridiculous amount to most in my yard. But that's like, and Scott Trench talks about that in the book also, but that's, that's, that's my thing. That's kind of my happy place, you know? My family, they don't they don't like working out in the yard. Uh, my wife, she works in the flower beds and stuff. But like, in terms of mowing and, and fertilizing and all that, like, that's that's my heart. It's my I love being out there. I put on my uh, headset, either listen to music or a podcast or a webinar or something like that, and I just enjoy myself. Early on Saturday mornings, especially, that's my happy place. That's why I continue to spend money there. But a lot of other stuff I cut out, eating fast food and. Like we just ran really lean and we got to the point where we can live off 50% uh, or less of our income. In fact, we built our budget around a $13 per hour uh, household income, you know, at, at, at like 40 hours per week. Now, the crazy thing is like a lot of people say like, you know, you can't live off that. You can, you can live off that much. It, you just gotta, you know, you gotta be determined. You gotta be disciplined. Uh, there's way, there's things that we do in terms of getting we get at least thirty-five to thirty-five dollars of free gas every single month. You know, um, it, it's ways you can do a little bit of couponing. It's ways you can shop, buy stuff in bulk. Like, there's a lot of ways of just kind of running very lean. Um, and you know, we managed to do pretty well at, at doing that, so we continue to do so, and that's helped a lot. So, uh, I, I I don't know. I guess if there's anything more specific you want me to share, and then also my question for you is like with videos like this do you do you want to see more videos talking about the financial side of things um as a general rule of thumb like i said earlier i sh i tend to stray away from them because i don't want people to feel like how do i put like one i'm gonna start off with this not knocking anybody's channel some people you know they talk the money stuff in the big and that, and then that's cool because that's them or that's their personality me like i, I enjoy having some nice stuff man but I, i'm really kind of I like being low key. <laughs> Says the guy with a with a track off on forties, but but all in all, I really I enjoy being low key for the most part. I mean, I, I don't I don't I don't talk much about money. If people ask me stuff, I'm transparent with you know the moves I make and how I did it because it's nothing magical. I'm not like some wizard or mastermind who knows how to do stuff that you can't do, and I don't have any secrets. You know, it takes time. Yeah. It takes time. You got to be patient. Yeah, you got to be patient. But like all things worth having, you know, they, they require a bit of patience. And I mean, I guess if you're willing to do that, you can you can get to wherever you want to get to. Um, I haven't even fully decided what my next move will be after this, but um, get around this truck real fast. I haven't even fully decided what my next move will be after this, but it's like. I don't know, man. I just, I just want to keep moving forward, doing the things I enjoy doing. I love having time to spend with my family, uh, and, and I love being able to share information that's going to help somebody else. You know, if you look at the the description on my channel, it tells you like, 
yes, I do this for all, every, everyone who's watching and things like that, which is great. But in addition to all of that, I, I do it because like I'm going to be gone one day and I want to have something here for like my grandchildren and great grandchildren. Hopefully this channel doesn't get taken down, but something where they can kind of look and watch and, and, and see, you know what I mean? What I was like, get an idea of my personality, see what my hobbies and passions were. And I think, I think that's really cool. That's probably my most favorite part. One of my most favorite parts about YouTube. But if there is a way where I can share information that is going to motivate or positively in, uh, inspire or encourage somebody else to, to be successful, whatever success looks like to them, then I'm all for it. You know, I guess in closing, my, my thought of the day, and this is something that, you know, I tend to think a lot, especially when I'm out doing my doing my morning runs, is like, I think our, our goal in life as adults is to achieve what I would consider full maturity. And it's not an age-based thing. I think that full maturity is achieved when your foresight is as insightful as your hindsight. Now think about think about that for a minute in closing. When your foresight becomes as insightful as your hindsight, right? So when you can look at a situation and be like, you know what? I don't need to hang around in this crowd because this person ain't about the right. And, and this comes from, from experience and a lot of loss. You know, I got a lot of homies who are no longer here. Some, some, some of them just being in the wrong place at the wrong time or being around the wrong people. Guilt by association, like all that stuff is real. So you gotta be mindful about who you're around, who you're hanging out with, the places you go. You might be a perfectly ideal citizen, you know, but you, you know, if you're hanging out at three, four o'clock in the morning, just miscellaneously, like it's a matter of time before something funky pops off, you know, where you may or may not get caught up in the middle of it. You know, there's not a ton of positive stuff that happens at three, four o'clock in the morning. Now this is a blanket statement. If you are in a club promoter, if you run a club, if you work security, it probably makes sense for you to be out like that. But a lot of times, especially with youngsters, you know, they, they just looking for something to do. And they out riding around driving and now you out there with the, with the knuckleheads, the drunk drop. I say knuckleheads. Well, I, I'm officially getting old because I just said knuckleheads like in a, in a full-fledged sentence. And I think it's official. I think I'm getting old now. I'm approaching 40. So, you know, it is what it is. But like you get to the point where you just start exposing yourself to a lot of a lot of mess, a lot of unnecessary mess. So just be mindful. I'm not saying don't go out. Just use your you use your foresight as well. You know, allow yourself to think through situations. If I do go over here and start racing, what are the consequences if I get caught? Can I deal with those consequences? Am I ready to do six months? Am I ready to pay a five thousand dollar fine? Am I ready to you know whatever it looks like? Make sure you're in a position where you can deal with those consequences and things. Uh, like I said, I think I've said a decent amount for this video. If you got any specific questions or anything, do me a f feel free to reach out to me. I am I'm fully transparent. I don't mind sharing a little bit I know. I don't know it all. I can give you some recommendations to channels that can tell you a ton more information about building financial wealth. Um, but you know, if interested, I can tell you how I built my businesses. I can explain what my different businesses are. Um, I can break down the hourly for you. You know, I won't go into details about how much you know I make per year, how little or how little or how much I guess I generate per year. But uh, you know, I don't live a lavish lifestyle, but I'm 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 comfortable. You know, I'm I'm able to put aside two or three pennies for rainy days. You know, so I'm definitely blessed. And uh, you made it this far. I, I appreciate you being here. At least I know is is if even one person can say, you know what. I, I've I learned something from this video. Or I've been inspired or I'm motivated. Anything like that, you know, I'll, I'll take it. All right. Each one, teach one. If I can change one person's life, I'm happy. I, I feel like I, I've, you know what I mean? I'm I'm actually living and, and giving back. So, hey, again, Steve Dab 317. I'm about to go in and sign out. At least I get to this car show and I got to charge this battery now. Thanks for watching. Peace.